This is Optimal Health Daily, episode 213. Everything and nothing in moderation, part two, by Neghar Fanuni of negharfanuni.com. And I'm your narrator, Dr. Neil. Welcome to another edition of Optimal Health Daily, where I read some of the best blogs covering health and fitness, just like an audiobook. And if you didn't know, this is one of now five podcasts where we read blogs to you. There's Optimal Living Daily, where my brother Justin reads to you posts about personal development. There's Optimal Finance Daily, which has some great tips to get out of debt and make more money. Then there's Optimal Startup Daily for entrepreneurs, freelancers, and managers. And our newest, Optimal Living Daily Relationships, covering all things relationships. Definitely check those podcasts out if you like the format of this show. Just as a reminder, today's post is a continuation from yesterday. I read the first half in episode 212, and I'm finishing it up today. So if you're new here, I recommend checking out yesterday's episode first. Plus, Miss Fanuni's posts are always fantastic. It's always a pleasure for me to read those. So definitely check out episode 212 and catch up with us. For the rest of you, let's hear part two as we optimize your life. Everything and Nothing in Moderation, part two, by Neghar Fanuni of negharfanuni.com. I can't eat just one cookie or have just one glass of wine. And you know what? There is nothing wrong with that. That's just not who I am. This realization was the missing link for me. It wasn't the frequent feeding model, the calorie counting, or the intermittent fasting that made me lean. All of these methods work. Paleo works. Nutrient timing works. Carb backloading works. There are a thousand ways to get results, but you'll never get there without finding your own path. You'll never get there if you keep sabotaging yourself because you haven't taken the time to understand your own psychology. It's taken me years to understand the fact that moderation for me is not proportionate to balance. Self-control does not necessarily equal the ability to stop at one cookie. Who the F eats one cookie anyway? Self-control is the ability to recognize that I can't stop at one cookie. It's all cookies or no cookies. Now, I know a lot of you might be listening to this and thinking I'm encouraging restriction and binging. Let me say once and for all, that is no way to live and I am in no way insinuating this. Simply put, find out if moderation is something you can embody. If not, find a new strategy. Don't continue to berate yourself for not being able to adhere to moderation. Physical leanness and sanity can coexist, I promise you. This is where I found balance and here's how. Necessary caveat. This is what works for me. I'm not suggesting that you do any of these things, merely that you should find out what creates balance in your life. Intermittent fasting. I keep my fasting windows long, 18 to 24 hours, and my feeding windows short. This gives me very little time to stuff myself, which makes it nearly impossible to overeat. I'll also do a long fast, roughly 36 hours, after a particularly indulgent weekend or a trip. This is in no way a binge restrict cycle, as some would have you believe. It's perfectly healthy and normal to take breaks from eating and allow your body time to reset to neutral. I actually thoroughly enjoy fasting, which puts the restriction argument to rest in that regard. Planning versus damage control. These two go hand in hand. I can plan ahead before a party and bring foods that I know won't sabotage my nutrition. Or I can fast all day, eat and drink like it's my last day on the planet, and do damage control the next day by incorporating a longer fast. Either way, I'm making a decision to be in control. Again, it's not binge restrict, it's a well thought out plan. The wheat free cheat. I wish I could give credit to the person who tweeted this, but for the life of me, I can't remember who it was. I do this instinctively because wheat just bloats me up. Incidentally, corn causes my body to have an autoimmune response, so I avoid that too. Majority of the time, I keep my cheats in the realm of whole foods, meaning I will eat things that do not directly support my goals, but do not directly undermine them either. For me, this usually entails a cheese tray with salami, dried fruit, and spiced nuts. Every once in a while, eat something truly wicked. This is where moderation comes in for me. I just don't wanna eat one slice of pizza. Instead, I eat pizza once or twice a year and eat the whole thing. As much as possible, eat with others. This accomplishes two things for me. One, I eat less because I'm less inclined to stuff my face in front of someone else. And two, it encourages human interaction while partaking in one of life's primal needs, 
Imagine that. Michael Pollan talks about the importance of eating as an act of communion in his renowned book, In Defense of Food. Enjoy every single thing I consume. Seriously, food is meant to be enjoyed. We have ventured so far from our primal roots that we are now eating on the go and settling for less than amazing. I never settle for food that doesn't knock my socks off. With these strategies in place, I can safely say to with moderation. I'm still legitimately crazy, but in a way that I am completely comfortable and at peace with. I hang out around 16% body fat, and I feel good in my Lulu. I lift heavy stuff and eat lots of bacon. Most importantly, I am insanely happy. So what say you? Everything in moderation, or is moderation an unattainable virtue? Are you more inclined to go cray-cray on a pint of Ben and Jerry's, or are you satisfied with just one scoop? Figure out what balance means to you, and I am confident you will find your own nutritional path. You just listened to part two of the post titled Everything and Nothing in Moderation by Nighar Fanuni of nighartfanuni.com. I'm gonna repeat something Ms. Fanuni mentioned earlier. I thoroughly enjoy fasting. This is really the key to her argument. The fact that she enjoys this pattern of eating is what makes it so successful for her. She doesn't mind not consuming food for hours at a time. For others, that may be unbearable. She found a system that works for her. And one of the other key things she mentioned is paleo, intermittent fasting, you name it, the Mediterranean diet, my plate, these all work. Why does it seem like we have so much conflicting evidence when we look at the science behind weight management? One day, you'll hear of a study that says the Mediterranean diet can help you lose weight. The next day, you'll hear a study that came out that says the paleo diet will help you lose weight. Or Atkins, or South Beach, or The Zone you name it. Why? It's because they all work if people are able to stick to them. So what Ms. Fanuni is trying to argue is that if you find it very difficult to moderate what you're consuming, then maybe you need to reconsider your approach. If you cannot consume foods in moderation, that it just doesn't suit your lifestyle, then you need to consider other methods for approaching your food. And that's okay. Nutrition should be very personal. You need to find what works for you. And that's something that I've always promoted on this show. The one thing I will mention is don't necessarily go overboard on the processed meats, which I'll talk about more on Friday. Now, just as a reminder, if you like the format of this show, check out Optimal Living Daily to learn more about habit building, minimalism, mindfulness, productivity, and lots more. That's hosted by my brother. Then there's Optimal Finance Daily, where you can learn more about personal money management in non-technical terms. We also have Optimal Startup Daily for all things entrepreneurship and business. And finally, Optimal Living Daily Relationships, our newest show for some great communication advice. Subscribing to those shows helps this one too. It's a great way to show your support. Thank you as always for listening today and every day. Thank you so much for sharing this with a friend. I'll be back tomorrow with a post from another great author, Mia Shanks. So I'll see you there where your optimal life awaits. Hello, Life Optimizer. This is Justin Mollick, creator and producer of this show and Optimal Living Daily, the brother podcast of this one. Literally, I'm Dr. Neil's brother. If you like the format of this show, you'll love Optimal Living Daily too, where I also read to you from blogs, but cover other topics like personal development, finance, and minimalism from bloggers like Derek Sivers, The Minimalists, Zen Habits, and many more. So for more amazing content read to you for free, come subscribe to Optimal Living Daily too. And together, we'll optimize your life. You've been listening to Optimal Health Daily. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on each new episode and head to oldpodcast.com. That's oldpodcast.com for a free gift as well as more actionable tips and resources to help you maximize your potential. Thanks for joining us and remember, your optimal life awaits.